error bounds are not new for us. We saw them with alternating series. We saw them in the form of this theorem, theorem 9.9, .9, and it does look a little bit intimidating. But in actuality, it was pretty straightforward. It said that if you have a partial sum of alternating series terms, you have a partial sum going to n terms, and you want to know how far that partial sum could be from the actual sum of the series, all you need to do is find the next term. And that right there will be the bound for how far you could be away from the actual sum of the series. So if you had the first seven terms of a series, all you need to do is find the eighth term, and that's the maximum distance you could be away from the actual sum. So it all came down to finding one thing, the next term for alternating series. Similarly, with Taylor polynomials, everything's going to come down to this M right here. You have theorem 10.1, which you really need to study well because it has a strong possibility of popping up on the BC calculus exam. It gives you an upper bound that comes down to that one M value, and our search is going to be for that M value. Everything else is known to us. So you have a function f of x, and you have the t nth Taylor polynomial right here, p sub n of x, and you have f of x, which is the actual function you are approximating right there. And it's all going to come down to this m value. You must memorize that. You must memorize that. Please memorize that. So what does this mean? How do you generate this upper bound for the error bound? It's all going to come down to the m value, and that m value is going to be some upper bound that you're going to find for the absolute value of the nth plus 1 derivative of f, the actual function that you are approximating. There's going to be different tactics for finding this m value, but once you find the m value, you're home free. So let's just dig into this expression right here. En, the error of the nth Taylor polynomial, is going to be defined just simply as the difference between the actual function and the nth Taylor polynomial that you found centered around A. In this case, when we play around, when we actually come up with this, we're going to center it around, uh, we're going to center around x equals 0 kind of a nice thing to do. It makes it a little cleaner for us. The key thing to realize is that this is an nth degree polynomial. And what we're going to start off with is taking a bunch of derivatives. So if we take a derivative and then take the derivative again and take the derivative again, and we end up taking the n plus 1th derivative of everything here, we just take the nth plus 1 derivative all the way through, something goes away, and that something is this because p sub n of x is the, is, has a degree of n. If you take the n plus 1th derivative, you end up with this right here going to 0. It's important to note that this is not actually a, having, does not e sub n, the error bound, e sub n, doesn't necessarily have a degree of n because it's the difference between the function and the nth degree. So when you take the n plus 1 derivative, it's not necessarily 0. So what you're left with is, e sub n, the nth plus 1 derivative of that, is equal to the nth plus 1 derivative of f. Okay, so let's keep cruising along and see if we get to something helpful. What we're going to next do is say, let's say in our investigation, let's say we were able to find some bound for the nth plus 1 derivative of f. Let's say we were able to find one somehow, we shave maximum values away, this is, again, the core of everything. But let's say we were able to find an m. That's helpful for us because then it gives us a bound for the nth plus 1 derivative of the error bound. And that's kind of helpful, but we really want a bound for the error bound. We'd love a bound for en, not the nth derivative. So how can we work on this? Well, we expand it into a compound inequality. And it's, oh, it can be equal to this. It just can't be. And you can expand it like this. But then if you have the nth plus 1 derivative, if you have the derivative of something and you want the function itself, you're going to want to integrate. And we're actually going to integrate a bunch of times. If we integrate once, we end up with negative mx. We end up with e sub n. And this goes up by 1 because it's counting the derivatives. And let's say we integrate it again. We end up with this. And again, you go up by 1, so it's going to be n minus 1. 
and you could theoretically keep on doing this a long time. You know, let's just do it one more time so you can see the pattern here. The n minus 2 and x, if you differ, remember we're integrating. This is all integration. And we end up with negative 1 half times 1 third. I'm not going to do it out so we can see the pattern. What you end up with is you start building a factorial in the denominator. And what you're really trying to head towards is you'd love to be able to bound just the error bound. What's a bound for the maximum error? And if you do this out and really study the pattern, you end up with 1 over n plus 1 factorial. And to generalize, this is around 0. But if it was around anything else, it would end up being times m x minus a to the third. Well, actually not to the third, sorry. It would be 2 to the n plus 1 in this case. But I'll just keep going with the same notation I've been using, centering it around 0. So if it stays centered around 0, it would be to the n plus 1 power. And then over here, it would be the same exact thing, negative n plus 1, 1 over n plus 1 factorial, m x to the n plus 1. And it you know, looks kind of disgusting, but it can collapse again. And you now have an error bound. You have a, you have a boundary for the error bound. It's not a derivative of it. It's the actual error, the difference between, remember, this is f of x minus the Taylor polynomial the nth Taylor polynomial, this is going to be less than, you can just move that m over, the m up here, n plus 1 factorial x to the n plus 1. Remember, this is centered around 0. The only thing that would really change is if it wasn't centered around 0, the x minus a. It's actually an x minus a right there with a is 0. So this is what you need to memorize, but everything comes down to when you're using it, this m value. And that's what should kind of be a mystery right now, like where do you get that m value? Yeah, you know what n is. You're going to be given, say, a fourth Taylor degree Taylor polynomial, and you're centering it around a certain x value. Uh, but where does that m come from? Let's try doing an example to strengthen up your understanding of this expression. Give a bound on the error, e4, when e to the x is approximated by its fourth degree Taylor polynomial about 0 for the interval negative 0.5 to 0.5. So what we need to focus on is the end here. And we need to find a bound for the n plus 1th derivative. So it says 4th degree, so n is going to be equal to 4. So we need to examine the 4 plus 1th derivative of the function. So that's going to be the 5th derivative of the function. And since the function is e to the x, it tells us right here. So this is our f of x right here. Keep on repeatedly taking the derivative f, uh, the fifth derivative of x, is indeed going to be e to the x. Well, we are looking at, we are looking at the interval for this question from negative 0.5 to 0.5. Negative 0.5 to 0.5. So on the interval between a and x, so in this case we're going from negative 0.5 to 0.5, what's the largest e to the x can be? Well, e to the x is always increasing. So if you're looking at this value from x between 1 half and negative 1 half, if you're going between those two things, we know that the absolute value of the fifth derivative of x is going to be less than or equal to the right-hand value. So that's going to be a half in that power position because x can slide between anywhere between negative 0.5 and positive 0.5. And that's equal to the square root of e. And you know that that's going to be between, uh, you know, e is 2.7, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. So you can say with confidence that that's less than 2. So we now know on the interval, on this interval, the fifth derivative of f has a maximum value of 2. This is our m value. We just found our m value. So we can now plug that in. We, now, we know from the formula the error bound is going to be the absolute value of the actual function minus the fourth degree Taylor polynomial. So we now know that's going to be less than or equal to the m value, which is 2, over n plus 1 factorial. But we know that n is equal to 4 in this case. We can take the fourth. So it's going to be 4 plus 1 factorial. 
and then it's going to be the absolute value of x, and it's centered around 0, so x minus 0, to the fifth. So we now know the error bound of 4 is going to be less than or equal to 2 over 5 factorial x to the fifth. So now you need to pick the value for x. And you pick the value for x that would lead, that led us to this maximum bound. The maximum bound was had, the maximum m value was had, uh, we bounded it with one half. So you plug in one half for x, and you end up with an error bound for 4 is going to be 2 over 5 factorial times one half to the fifth, which is equal to, uh, which is equal to, if we do out the decimals, we end up with 0 0.00, 0, 0 oh, three zero, sorry, zero. Zero five two zero eight three, and one thing you'll see in the book is they just say the lot's going to be less than zero point zero 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 six. So what that means is, if you were to use the fourth Taylor polynomial for e to the x, which is one plus x plus x squared over two factorial, this is the nice clean one, eight over three factorial. If you were to use this to estimate, well then it's more like that, estimate e to the x around x from one half to negative one half, the maximum error you're going to see is this right there. So if you were to use this approximation for e to the x for the values between negative a half and a half, the maximum error you would see would be 0 0.0006. To be more precise right there, but we like to round a little.